Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. Today we are painting a super cute Easter gnome. This has been a real favorite, super adorable, very easy. Um, so this is going to be the model that we'll be working from and then let me show you the traceable. So we always include the traceable line art with the transfer paper and all the supplies that you need in the painting kit. So that's there for y'all. And then I have worked ahead to give you your canvas on So we're gonna switch canvas and get started. And get these on. <laughs> All right, and I am so sorry. I have a little bit of a cold today. Many, many apologies on that. I will try to pop away from the mic. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> let's move this back a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about all of our beautiful supplies here. So I've got paint plates nearby. And then my napkins, my brushes, my paint nearby here. And then of course, yeah, your kit comes with, we're gonna to start to use nine by 12 canvas. I'm really liking the size of that. It's a little bit bigger than the eight by 10. It gives a little bit more space and room. So loving that, we're gonna to move to that. And then, uh, but it does, by the way, the traceable does work for any size between eight by 10 or 11 by 14. So if you have a preference and you wanna do something different, um, you can certainly use that range. So, but today I am using a nine by 12. All right, so to get started, first of all, let me show you the, these are the paints that come with the kit. And mine are a little bit used here. I like to recycle all my supplies and keep using them as much as I can. And then like I mentioned earlier, I've got some paint that's already out early. All right, so let's talk about our family of brushes. So we have, our little family here, this is the Mama Brush, and then the Little Buddy Brush, and then also the Little Bit Brush. This is the smallest little like llama brush that we have, and these are all Taclon brushes, very durable, lasts a long time. All right, um, real quick, let me, we do have a separate tutorial on the, tr on the uh, transfer process, but I basically just try to place, place this right in the middle, so a few quick tips here. Dull gray side faces up, shiny black side faces down. I always just tape right up here at the top. We're just kind of definitely is secure to the top of the canvas. And then there's a pencil that comes with your kit. You basically just draw over every single line and then that will transfer your image to this canvas. I leave all of it free and loose and not taped anywhere else, but just up at the top. And then that way um, you can check your work and make sure that you have all the line work done before you completely lift off. Because once you lift off the trace, you're never going to be able to line it up exactly the same way. So it's really important to check your work when you're done. So worked ahead. I have all the transfer work done. Then there's also a permanent marker that comes with your kit. So again, the pencil, the permanent marker, and then I come in over the top and line everything out with the permanent marker. Beginners really love that because it keeps your transfer in place and it actually bleeds through the paint just a little bit. And then that's very, very helpful. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start with the background. So we've got our mama brush here. And I'm going to go ahead and get it just a little bit wet and scrape the excess moisture out. Let's go ahead and dry off. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and take the mama brush. I'm going to pick up a nice big dollop of the white and then just a teeny tiny amount of the black. I just barely touched the corner of my brush into the black. We're going to go ahead and mix those two together. And again, this is titanium white and that is Mars black with your head there. You've got the paint right up here. So we're gonna mix those two together. 
And then I'm just going to go ahead and there's a couple different brush strokes you can use. You can either just use like a horizontal stroke just back and forth that I always like to alternate between the white and the gray. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is a crisscross stroke, which is really nice. It looks like you make the letter X over and over again. I push back that water so it doesn't make a shadow. And I'm just going to alternate between that lovely light gray that we made and then also the white. And then another little bit of color that I like to add into this to create some nice little texture. There's also just a little hint of this um, gold over here, and we can use our cadmium yellow to go ahead and work that in. So again, a little bit of white, just back and forth, a little touch of the black, make that nice light gray. We'll continue just working this back and forth. And as we do our line work around the ear, I'm going to go ahead and hold this brush more like you would hold a pencil. That's going to give you a thinner line edge. It's going to help you do your cut-in work. And then when we're working back out into the background, then we're just going to continue into that little crisscross stroke. And I'm going to hold the brush more over to the side, parallel to the canvas. So again, a little cut-in work by using more of the line edge of the brush. And then working into the background, then shift it more over to the side. That will give you more of a light, gentle hand. And then again, just every now and again, you can just kind of barely dip into some of that gold color. Or with your kit, that's going to be more of that cadmium yellow. You can just do a little hint of that every now and again. That just adds a nice little bit of texture in the background. A little bit of texture, a little bit of color variance. But it's very subtle and just every now and again there. And we're going to continue this all the way around the background. Also, the gold tones or the yellow tones, those are completely optional. You can certainly choose to just have more of a, a really light neutral with just the gray. That's also really pretty. So just going back and forth between gray and white can also be a really pretty look. Okay, super cute, and that's all the background. So we're gonna go ahead and rinse out now. Get that brush nice and clean. We are using acrylic paints today. Uh, they do set up and dry very quickly, so you always wanna make sure that you clean your brushes immediately after use. If you don't have a chance to get to them, it's always better to let them sit in the water than it is to let them sit out or they could dry permanently on the brush and just harden the brushes up and make those unusable. So very important to either let it sit in the water or just clean those immediately. 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and use some primary cyan blue. I've got some out on my plate already and just a little touch of white. So we're gonna grab a little touch of this blue here, push it off to the side of the plate, and then a little touch of the white. We're gonna mix those two together. And again, still using my mama brush. They switch over to Little Buddy next as we get into the smaller areas. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this light blue right in through here. We can add a little bit of the darker blue too to add little shadows in here, or a little bit of variation with the blue so it's not just all one color. And a little bit of that dark blue will be pushed into the mix. Weave that across. All right, and use a light hand and just kind of sweep that all the way across there at the top. Very pretty. And then we're going to come back in with more of that primary cyan blue and the white that mix there on the side, and we're gonna go ahead and bring this into the edge work here of the little bunny ear. A little bit more of the darker blue as I go around the edge. And then again on this side. So just holding the brush just like you would hold a pencil. That's gonna help give you more of that thin line edge of the brush to work with, which helps you work into these smaller areas. switch over to a smaller brush now and let mama rest in the water we're going to go ahead and switch over to our little buddy brush it's our little flat top there and then I'm going to add quite a bit more white we're going to really lighten that up and I'm going to make a much lighter blue here in the center Coming here and make a, a little line work around that. And let's do a little bit here and just go pure white. Kind of run that along the edge. All right, same thing here. section. should have done this that darker blue to begin with. And then fill that back in. Right. Super cute. Let's out, dry off. Let's come back in with little buddy. More of that medium blue. Primary cyan blue and white. Kind of an even mix on that. and work into this little mitten here.
Okay. And then we have the little shoes. So let's grab a little bit more of that primary cyan blue with that white. Still using the little buddy brush. I'm just holding it just like you'd hold a pencil. Do that line work around the edges first, and then when we have to fill into the middle, go ahead and kind of hold that brush more over to the side. All right, we have a little bit of a shadow happening here, so I'm going to take just a teeny amount of that black. Very little bit goes a long way. The blue. And mix those two together over there on the side. And so let's go ahead and go with our little bit brush. And we've got a light red across the corner here with a little bit of shadow. So again, this is that black and that blue. And again, we're going to just hold the brush more over to the side and do a light little pull. A little bit of a shadow there. Take that and come to the inside. And then we're going to create a little bit of a shadow here on the mittens as well. So we're just going to do a little soft curve there. Really pretty. Let's do a little bit of a shadow here too. Okay. And up here on the ears as well. Curve, almost kind of feels like you make a little parenthesis shape. Oh. All right, quite lovely. Let's go ahead and rinse out. All right. Well, let's get all of our brushes clean. Let's go ahead and rinse out. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go ahead and do, let's see, let's go ahead and do a little bit of the gray beard next. All right, so that's just going to be, I'm going to use my little bit brush, which is white, a little touch of the black, so Mars black in with the titanium white. A little bit more of a charcoal gray to begin with. Go ahead and work that around the nose. And we're just going to do slight little holes down into the shape of that beard. Let's go ahead and do a little outline. And don't worry, we're going to come back over the top with more white to kind of soften this out and create some highlights. So it is looking a little bit dark to begin with. And we're going to do little tiny sections of the beard down here. Rinse out. Mm -hmm. 
So using a little bit, I'm gonna go into pure white now. And we'll just kind of pull down. Right from the nose. Get lots of little highlights. This is where it's really starting to look more like actual beard hair. Do that here on the other side as well. Keep tiny little strokes. Make sure they have a little bit of a curve to them so that they look more like natural curving hair that comes into the beauty. Here as well with just little tiny strokes of just pure titanium white right over the top. Okay. We rinse out. All right, now we're going to make a soft pink color. So with your paint, you can use the Cadmium red, I have some out of my plate already. And I'm gonna go ahead and do some white, mostly white. We're gonna do a real tiny touch of the red. Very, very small. And see how light that pink is? That's just with me barely touching into a little bit of that red into the white. It's gonna make a really light pink. And we're gonna go ahead and put this in right over the top. Still using a little bit brush. Here's our pink little nose. And you can bring in a little bit more red if you want. I'm going to create a little bit of a shadow here. A bit of a dark, darker shade there. I just kind of darkened up that pink a little bit. I just made it a little bit darker. On this one side, just tiny little strokes, kind of feathering that out about halfway across. And then let's rinse out and come back in with more of a white highlight on the other side. So we're using a little bit brush now, just pure white. It's going to take a nice little short white right over the top. Now we're going to come in with these cute little pink sleeves. So again, it's the same thing, some cadmium red. You can also make a more of a vibrant pink if you'd like with some of the primary magenta. So let's go ahead and give you a little visual on that. A little teeny little pea-sized amount of that primary magenta. It's pretty vibrant. You can use that. If you just want really hot pink, you can use it straight up or just add a teeny amount of white to it. And still using a little bit brush, we're going to go ahead and work into these little sleeves right here. And in order to get a more opaque amount of coverage, just try to hold that handle more over to the side, light, gentle strokes. Because if you hold it just like a pencil, it's going to dig into the paint and make it more translucent. So again, as you're working in your second coat, you've got your little details done so you can hold that handle more over to the side. Very, very cute. Let's 
and rinse that. All right, now let's use some of our Viridian here for the little egg. Let's get it out. All right, very pretty. We'll do a little pea size amount of that. And let's go ahead and use Little Buddy. And we'll add just a tiny little touch of titanium white to our Viridian. I'll lighten it up a little bit. And then work this into our egg. And you'll notice I did that line work with our permanent marker so it will bleed through. If you are covering it up and you're losing it, um, you can add just a little bit of water to this to make it a little bit more translucent so that you'll be able to see it. to the pores of the canvas and also turn that brush hand a little bit more over to the side. Your light gentle hand helps feather out those brush strokes, makes it look a little bit more even and smooth over the top. All right. We're going to let that set up and dry a little bit before we come back in with the white detail work over the top. We're going to start to work in some of these creamier tones with the hat and the trousers here. All right, so we need to make a brown and then we'll lighten that up a little bit. So I'm going to be using cadmium orange. We'll do a little pea size amount of that. And then we'll add a little touch of the black to the cadmium orange. And that will make brown. Yeah. Okay, get a little bit of a closer look. So black with orange makes brown. It's very dark to begin with. You can add more orange to make a lighter brown, more like a milk chocolate color. And then of course you can add a little bit of the white, and then that makes it really, really light, light brown. bit more white here off to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and start to paint into this little hat here. I'm using my little buddy brush. Working into the fuller section of the hat, we want to turn that handle more over to the side. And then as we're doing the line work, we're going to hold the brush more like a pencil. That'll give us a nice little line in it. So I'm going to come in with a little bit more white. Kind of smooth that in over the top. Lighten that up a little bit. Pretty. Now we're going to work on our little trousers here. All right, little Betty's already becoming too big, so let's wipe off the excess paint so we can still use that. Put some in the water. We're going to come back to our little bit brush, do a little twirl here into the paint to get a nice fine point so it gives us more precision and then we'll go ahead and work this into this little section here just filling in
But between that little beard, I'm going to go back over the beard a little bit to bring it back out to the front. Alright, so we need a little bit more of a shadow, so I'm bringing a little bit of that darker brown that we still have left over. And I'm going to bring in that little shadow here. And again on the other side. rinse out completely and then go back into the, the just pure white so a little bit a little touch of pure white here and we're gonna make just a little tiny line of white as that pattern comes in over the top and then we have little tiny dashes, so I'm like little tiny dashes. Very gentle touch on this, just barely touch the canvas. Okay, very nice. And then we're going to work back in over the top with our beard here. So I'm going to take that same white and just kind of pull down right over the top and just kind of feather in little pieces of what looks like little beard hair. It comes right over the top here. All right, very pretty. And then let's do some of those fun little circles here. So again, just white. And be careful you don't rest your sleeve in the paint as you're going. Um, be careful about placement here. I'm gonna hold my hand up a little bit. So I have to do a little bit of a push and a twirl. Do a few little half circles off to the side. That looks like you make a half circle. Just connect to that outside there. Now in the center, as I did a little spin on the brush, it left a little bit of a vacancy of paint in the center. So I just came back in with a little touch of paint and just kind of lightly touched in the center there to help fill that in. And I'm just gonna sprinkle just little tiny circles all around. Right, getting very close to being finished with our really cute little Easter gnome here. So we still have to do the decor on the egg. So I've got a clean brush, I'm going to come back with that pure white. And I'm starting to see my little swirls re-emerge, so I'm going to go ahead and just follow those along. Now another option you can do too is you can wait for this paint to completely set up and dry. And it's not exactly the same, it won't be the white over the top, but it's still really cute 
you felt more confident, you could use the uh, permanent marker and you could just twirl on the pattern design of black over the top too, which would also be really cute. And as you do these little swirls, it kind of feels like you make them number six. Just kind of an easy thing to tell your brain. Helps it, makes it easier to do that stroke. Like a curling number six. In that case, it was kind of a curly number nine, but you could always Turn the canvas. Help your brain understand. And you have little tiny circles in here. Very, very fun. Let's see. Just trying to make sure we're really close to being getting down here. A little bit more just flat. Just do a little tiny outline. Kind of working in just a few more little touches of that shadow. Come back in with my blue and white here. I'm just kind of go right back into that mitt and kind of soften that up a little bit. We are done with our super cute little Easter gnome. And we are dry here, so that's wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and use the permanent marker to do my signature. It's much easier. I'm going to sign right here. been a pleasure painting with y'all today. So much fun. Such a cutie to have around the house and help decorate for the season of Easter. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. And again, you can find everything you need for this painting kit to match everything so that you have all of your supplies at tipsyartist.com. And I'll leave that link below as well in the description. But again, thank you so very much for joining us. We look forward to seeing y'all soon. Much love to y'all. Toodles.